They all wanted it to be closer. Check my mic. Yeah, you're good. Testing my height. Testing my height. Derek's just switching now. Are we on? Test contested. One, two, three. Harry has a little while. Uh, the doctor was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> How's that, Terry? Okay. How's this one? Better. Kevin, can you hear me? Yes. Jose, can you hear me? What? <laughs> We're working. We're working. Okay. We're going to get started in a moment. So I don't want to steal Tom's thunder. This is the wonderful Tom Grady, one beloved friend, and his wife Jane. Everyone here is most welcome, and everyone online. You ready to go? Go okay, sit down and shut up. <laughs> well, this is, uh, like I said to Barry, this is a YWAM gathering, so we can be flexible, right? Yeah. Very flexible, even though we may look polished, right, Peter? Especially when you come up. <laughs> well, welcome to the celebration of Bridget. Um, we all have mixed emotions about Bridget because we miss her and she was such a delightful uh, presence all the time when we were with her. But thank you for coming today to honor her life, the life she lived, and most of all, to honor the God that she loved and served almost all her life. As we know, he, our Jesus, is the resurrection and the life. So, Richard is alive today in his presence, in Jesus' presence. And we are very, I, I was thinking about this yesterday, we are very unusual people in that we have great sorrow about this loss, but we have even greater joy knowing the hope that we share in Christ Jesus. There are many of you uh, joining us over the internet online today celebrating Bridget as well. It's not possible to mention all of you, but a special note, we welcome Bridget's family in Puerto Rico, her mom and stepfather, Norma Antonio, her sisters and their hubbies, Vanessa and Carlos, Daphne and Danny, and Bridget's late father's wife, Marlene, who lives in Chicago. Also joining us from England and Wales are Peter's family, his mom, Mrs. Margaret Gilroy in Crosby, Liverpool, Peter's brother, Steve, and his wife, Bev, and from Adelaide, Australia, I probably pronounced it wrong, Peter's sister, Anna Marie, and her husband, Dave, and their family. And then many friends in Holland, New Zealand, England, Scotland, California, Orlando. Peter and Bridget lived many, many places and knew many, many people. So we welcome all of you today online. We're very grateful to God for the technologies that allow you to join us today. Let's ask our gracious God to bring comfort and blessing to our time together as we honor the life of our friend, Richard. Father, thank you for the, the privilege of coming together and remembering somebody that has been so dear to all of us. We miss her today. We know Peter misses her. And yet we know that she's present with you and we can rejoice in that and give thanks and come together as her family and praise you for her life and what she contributed to all of us. So we trust you for this time. We ask that you would make the comments that are shared and the music and the worship a beautiful symphony of love to you and 
gratefulness for our sister and what she did in our lives and how she contributed to all of us. And we ask you to lead this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Mary is going to come and lead us in scripture. If you would like to sing along with us, we certainly encourage you to do so to worship along with us. Uh, sadly, I don't have anything up on the on the screen for you, but if you've got internet here and would like to look up the lyrics, we're going to sing uh, Ten Thousand Reasons." Is that cool? Or unless you know it by heart. Bless the Lord. Sing 
details about uh, Bridget's life. Bridget was born in Chicago in 1967 to Dean Benson and Norma Morales, who later uh, divorced. And Norma later moved the family to Puerto Rico, where Bridget grew up and went to school, learning Spanish. Peter says in only three months, she learned Spanish. Her mom remarried Tonio Diwali, and they bought, brought up Bridget and her two sisters on the island until Bridget did a DTS, discipleship training school, with YWAM in Puerto Rico. After her DTS, Bridget felt called to missions in Europe, and especially Germany, and completed a wonderful YWAM school of missions in Salem, Oregon. She came over to Amsterdam to join the Summer Go teams, and that is where and how she met Peter in 1988. They fell in love in Portugal, although they started out as just friends on three of those teams. It's something about youth ministry it usually leads to courtship and marriage. <laughs> and if you're a, a team leader with YWAM or other ministries, you end up doing weddings. And uh, Peter and Bridget actually had two weddings. They married twice, October the 4th, 1989, in the UK with Peter's family and friends. The 14th, Tom. At, pardon? The 14th. The 14th? Did I say something different? Okay, the 14th. Because two weeks later, you got married again, right? I don't want to forget it. Yeah, you're right. I know. <laughs> he doesn't want to forget it. Uh, they were married at Kingsway Christian Fellowship near Liverpool. And Peter's father, Peter Gilroy Sr., walked her down the aisle. And then October 28th, they had a second wedding in Iglesia Emmanuel in Puerto Rico with her family, with Bridget's family. Both her dad, Dean Benson, and her stepdad, Manuel Antonio Diwali, walked her down the aisle. That was 34 years ago. And Bridget and Peter have lived in many places over the years, establishing lifelong friendships that God has blessed them with even to this day. In 1992, they moved to San Francisco, where both were pastors at a vineyard church until 1996 when they moved to London. Sounds like you were on vacation all the time, all this <laughs> Serving on staff with St. Albans Vineyard Church. And in 99, Peter and Bridget moved to Atlanta, to Marietta, and were part of the Grace Ministries International Family doing internships. And then Bridget actually worked on staff there until 2007 when they went back to the UK, where Peter served with the Church of England as a vicar. Bridget completed her BA and then her MA in children's literature over the last eight, seven, eight years. And up until their trip to Puerto Rico a year ago, Bridget served as a customer service associate at Whitehaven Library in Cumbria. 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 Okay. This could be typos from you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Bridget went home to be with Jesus on September 27th, just a year ago. As we know, Bridget is not here, 
but she's very much alive. Present with her Lord and Savior Jesus. We miss her. She impacted all of our lives in many ways, especially Peter's wife, her husband, and best friend for over 33 years. Bridget was life-giving, if you ever were around her. Her sweet spirit, her servant heart, her compassion for others, her loyalty to her family and friends, her mischief and her humor and her infectious smile. Our hearts go out to you today, Peter. And we're here to comfort and encourage you. And we say with the Apostle Paul, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our affliction. He is your comfort today, Peter, as he is ours as well. And I say to Peter, only God, as you know, can assuage the loss that you feel, bring hope and confidence, and he has done just that. We've watched you press on, confident that God is bigger than your loss, that he will sustain you, make his presence personal and real to you. You've encouraged us in this last year as we've witnessed your recovery and your honesty. I've loved my times with you, Peter. Letting me in to experience the raw emotion that comes with losing your son. Many of us here today have felt what you feel, losing family and friends that we didn't think we could live without. But then that phrase, but God. Always, but God. Bridget loved the Psalms, especially David's Psalms, and the story of David in particular. David was from a humble beginning, as we know. In fact, Samuel told, uh, asked Jesse, after he'd gone through all the other brothers as the pick to be the next king, he asked about his sheep herder son, and David was described as ruddy with beautiful eyes and a handsome face. When I read that, Peter, I thought, maybe this is why Bridget liked David, because he reminded her of you. Ruddy, are you ruddy? <laughs> with beautiful eyes and a handsome face. Bridget was captivated by David's story. David had fortitude. He believed God was greater than any giant and that a confident trust in him would give Israel the victory. We know all that story turned out. From there, David was designated as the king to be, replacing Saul. And as we all know, David was that man after God's own heart. And he lived all the ups and downs of an ordinary man who was placed in an extraordinary role, king of Israel. He succeeded and failed. He won battles and he lost battles. He believed God and also doubted God. He showed his strength in powerful ways and also displayed weakness in ways that shocked everyone. And along the way, to our benefit, he wrote in his journal. And we have it recorded in the Psalms. So with Peter's input, I picked Bridget's favorite, and you can imagine, it's one you're very familiar with, Psalm 23. I wish I'd been able to talk to Bridget about this, but not having that opportunity, I'm going to surmise it. She would have seen in that Psalm that touched her deeply. Yahweh is mentioned there as the shepherd. That means he took care of everything that David needed, everything. David wanted for nothing. I think this impacted Bridget. And looking back on conversations with her and with Peter back in the day, in the GMI days when we were together there, I know that she saw God as a shepherd, as a caregiver, as one who would take care of her, and she knows that fully now. 
completely. As he is everything that she imagined that he was to be. He's that now to her. She doesn't see through a dark glass anymore. She sees face to face. And she knows herself the way she's always been known by Yahweh. I love it. It's a beautiful picture. She's able to lie down in green pastures by still waters and have her soul restored. And we are invited to the same. And he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Today, we, we're kind of re-walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We recognize the finality of death here. We miss Bridget. We can't talk to her. We can't see her. We can't be graced by the warmth of her smile. But we know where she is, and therefore we fear nothing. We don't have to hope for the best for her. We know that where she is and who she's with is the very best that we could ever imagine for her. And we are comforted, and so is she. For Bridget, Bridget, no enemies to fear for Bridget. For us, there's still an enemy, but our Yahweh has prepared a table for us in the presence of that enemy, and he anoints us with his own blessing, and he cares for us. We persevere in his strength. And her cup runs over. And ours runs over as well. In Jewish tradition, when a guest was in your home, you didn't just refill their cup. You ran it over, which was a statement to them that you wanted them to stay and not leave. And in Jesus' presence, the psalmist says, there is fullness of joy. David quoted that. He's, there's present, in his presence, there's fullness of joy an experience of abundance that is beyond imagination. The last verse says, Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord, Yahweh, forever. I hope we can visualize this today for Bridget, because surely goodness and mercy are hers in abundance. And in the presence of the Lord Jesus himself, there is no need for anything. There is want for nothing. And this is our confidence for her today. She's home. We're away from home. We're still here. Maybe we're going home soon. And even more than that, even though knowing that she's safe and well in her home where she belongs, we will see her again. And we will rejoice with her. And someday soon we will catch up on all the latest in terms of her presence with Jesus, what it's like, what it's been, what it's for, what it means to her. And we shall dwell there as well forever. Just forever. That's the hope that we have today for Bridget. As we know, Bridget has many friends, among them all of you, and one of her dear friends from Scotland, right? Renetta is going to come and share some thoughts with us about Bridget. Well, that was really lovely um, to know about that psalm being which is favorite. I didn't really know that, so and I was thinking about it this morning um, about walking through that valley. And um, before I say that, um, I feel like I, um, I don't know how well everybody knew Bridget, but uh, she was very, she was very, um, she had a lot of humor and. Um, she came visited me once in, um, I lived with her first, and she, had, she was very bubbly. We all know her as bubbly. She, had a, she could laugh, 
We had a lot of fun. That's how she was. And she was the most um, unreligious, if you like, person <laughs> that you could know. And um, we had a lot of fun. And one time, her and Peter came and visited me in Germany. And I, I don't know if Peter remembers this. And we used to talk about this often. Um, and um, I used to wear contact lenses. So I was in bed. <laughs> Oh, and in the middle of the night, suddenly this, and all I could see was like a shadow, and the shadow is walking through my bed, the bedroom, and I'm like, I'm saying to my husband, what's that? I'm thinking it was some sort of ethereal being, <laughs> and, it, and it turned out that it was Bridget, because she was sleepwalking, and I forgot that she was <laughs> and eventually I was like, oh, I was like, and my husband was like, Bridget, that's Bridget, and I was like, Bridget. Bridget, and she didn't wake up, and the next morning we talked about that very, very often, every time I met her, and uh, we, we lived sort of in different places, I was never there where she, where she was for a long time, when I came to England, she might be in England, and the next time she was in the States, but every time we uh, met up, it was always, um, it, we just carried on straight from where we left off, that's how it was, and she was very much into like she, cooking and making food, and everything was centred around her sitting at the table and eating together and um but really so that was very special it was very difficult to know when she passed i cried at that moment and um but one of the last things that she wrote to me was that she she said you know Veneta, she said i don't know what the future i'm anxious about the future and she said um but she said you know there's this this thing in, in indiana jones where um indiana jones has to jump off the lion's head to get the yeah grey and he steps into darkness mm -hmm. and he has to take a leap of faith mm -hmm. into the darkness and she said that's where I feel that I'm at right now mm -hmm. and I have to take a leap of faith but there's hope but there's hope she said and when I was thinking about today and thinking about you know going through the valley of the shadow of death um and I was thinking that Jesus is there he's Robin Star and that's what it made me think and I thought she in in that I mean, her, her sister's not here, but one of the, in that last mo those last moments, her thoughts were really on Peter. It wasn't on her pain. It wasn't on what she was going through. It was really to get everything clear with, with Peter. So she told her sister things to speak to Peter. But I felt that that was such a strength in her and that she would take this leap of faith with hope and that this um, walking into this um, valley, that there was the rod and staff and her make was there and that I really felt that she has such a strength and she loved Jesus so much that was her whole life he was her whole life um, and yes we can, as much as it's so hard that she's not here we can come be comforted that she is with him and that she's there with her maker who she loves so much yeah. <laughs> Eric and Patrice have taken care of Peter. It's his home away from home. They definitely have the gift of hospitality, right, Peter? And he has been blessed with wonderful fellowship with them and care from them. And uh, Derek is going to come and share a few words about his connection with Peter and Bridget. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, I may be the only person here who possibly has known Bridget longer than Peter did. Um, I'm not sure, but I think I met her before you did. Didn't I? Okay. So it was in Amsterdam. It was on the youth of the mission base there. And I was in charge of our largest building in the city. We had five individual uh, locations in the city of Amsterdam. And the largest one was a building called Deport. Uh, which means the gate in Dutch. And uh, we had some security problems at the port, which was very normal in Amsterdam with different facilities. And uh, the port used to be a um, like a stopover place for sailors. And as they would come into the Amsterdam port, they, it was kind of a hostel, actually. It was a very large building. We purchased it, used as a mission in Amsterdam. But we decided we needed a security system on the door. And I was in charge of that building and had a whole team of folks that were working with me. And I came walking into the building one day 
and you had to go through two security doors to get in. The second one was a glass door, and you stood there, and probably to where the uh, the music stand and the computer is, there was a reception desk, and it was all glass in between us. And everybody in the building knew me because I was the boss. Everybody knew me, and they just, oh, you see me coming in, they come to the butt. And of course, I went to open the door, and it was blocked, and I looked. And here's this very small, really charming, very curious looking expression on the face of this, I thought of kind of a little girl, peeking over the reception desk, frowning. And I thought, you don't know me? Come on. And, and she very hesitantly pushed the button to buzz me in. And as soon as I opened the door, Bridget says, uh, and who are you, sir? And what is your business here? <laughs> and I said, and who are you, young lady, and what is your business? <laughs> that was completely, you know, undaunting to Bridget because she was indeed a spitfire. <laughs> and, uh, but I was so overwhelmed, but as soon as she realized who I was, and I had a right to be in the building, I mean, I, we actually lived there as well. And she, uh, she lit up like a Christmas tree, and she had such a wonderful habit of doing it. And when Bridget would smile, that quirky, mischievous little, I'm going to get you kind of smile, the whole world just lit up around her. And I thought, wow, what a treasure we have here sitting at the reception for the court. Little did I know who Bridget would end up marrying. Peter eventually ended up on another team that I had. We had a pastoral team on the base. Because it was the it was a very large missionary base, and uh, so I I recruited Pete to be on my team, and Peter and I actually share quite a few things in common. Our personalities are quite different. Um, we both really enjoy the study of Scripture. We both love the Lord. We're we're both quite passionate about beer, and um, <laughs> yes, same amen, right? And. Uh, also, interestingly enough, uh, yesterday I was able to identify with some of the pain that Peter's going through because it was 22 years ago yesterday that Marie died. And two days before that, the Bridget died. And, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul says, I comfort you with the same comfort wherewith the Lord has comforted me. In other words, I've walked where you're walking. I, I, we can't always say to someone, we do say to people, <laughs> I know just how you feel. But so many times we don't. It's just a nice colloquialism, isn't it? You know, Paul said that we are always surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses or whoever wrote Hebrews. Um, and I'm just, you know, the kind of a simple faith guy that happens to believe that perhaps Bridget's in your cloud mm -hmm. this morning, Pete. And we know, all of us who know Bridget know exactly what she would be saying if we could hear her in this room. She would say, carry on, Pete. It's going to be okay. Carry on. And it will be okay. I'm also living proof of that. And I know how hard this is for you. Um, but I got to tell you, Bridget's not worried about She's just not worried about you because she's standing with the one who has your future so securely. Mm -hmm. In his hand. So we do celebrate, Richard, but you know, Christians, Tom started so beautifully. Christians, we're just schizophrenic people because we can cry and rejoice at the same time. Who, who else on earth can do this legitimately with purpose and reason from a foundation of truth? Only the people of God. And we are. And Bridget is, not just was, Bridget is in truest form a daughter of the Most High God. So yes, we miss her. We miss her laughter. We miss that incredible mischievousness she just, you know, Bridget was this tiny little package of dynamite that never let anybody get the best of her. 
and she could go toe to toe with anybody and normally win. So, you know, I gave up a long time ago, but I had the joy also. I remember the first day that I walked into Grace Ministries after Bridget was hired to be our office manager. And I went back immediately as she was sitting behind our reception desk. And I remember I walked, there were no doors we had to buzz in, thankfully, because she probably never would have let me in. <laughs> but as I walked into the, the entrance of Grace Ministries first day and saw Bridget sitting there, I immediately went back in my mind back in Amsterdam when I saw her behind and I thought, wow, there really are such things as full circles mm -hmm. in life. And Bridget was very much a part of your circle, Pete. But your circle's not closed yet. Love you, buddy. Yeah. Peter? Share with us. Father, take care of this dear friend of ours and give him the words to share his heart today. The clarity and thank you for the way that you're returning his voice to him. We thank you that you live inside of him, Jesus, and that he has everything he needs in you. Thank you. Amen. 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 I wrote some things down because I didn't trust myself. But thanks so much for being here, for your love and support to the worst year of my life. Losing bridges, God tell you, I'll be in my hands. But we still have hope, yeah. don't we? Yeah. And we've got each other, we've got to love each other too. Okay, I'm going to start. <clears throat> I was on greeting duty when I met Bridges at the front door of the port. Interesting people you meet along the way. Tiny little woman, little girl, little tiny denim jacket, jeans, and a big suitcase. And so I was on staff there on duty. So I welcomed her and I carried her suitcase. And I carried a lot more things over the last 34 years together with her. And at times, we carried each other. Whatever happened, we were always there for each other. You know what she was like. She was full of energy and life and compassion. We rescued many animals and living in Cumbria where we were. We'd walk past the cows and the cows would come over she was like the cow whisperer. <laughs> he couldn't not love Bridget. She was such a wonderful person with a soft, loving heart. She loved God above everything else. But she loved me too. And I loved her. We weren't perfect, believe it or not. And neither was Bridget. All the way through our lives, we covered for each other. And sometimes we carried each other as well. I was the messy one. She was the tidy one. She was the quiet one sometimes. I was the loud little one. She liked to stick to the rules. I was a little bit looser. <laughs> but through the ups and downs of life, wherever we were, we were there for each other. And of course, as you heard, through the last seven or eight years, she worked long distance all the way to get a degree and then a master's degree. Then she got the job in the library and she loved it, serving the people, welcoming people. Some of them probably watching online now. She got to go to school and teach literacy to the children. It's a perfect job. But then we came to a point where we needed to make a change in life. We wanted to come see Bridget's family and their stepfather 
Sonia was so frail. And the cold father of the this man riding the wrong, driving the wrong way, hit us. We were in the back seats. We were crushed by that car and the one behind. But you know what? Even though she died, I know she would want me to live. And I look pretty good for a dead guy, don't I? <laughs> I'm so proud of Bridget. All that she won, all that she did, and I respect her for everything that she and everything that she gave. Everywhere she went, I think she made things better. And she made me a better person too. She was the best gift I ever received. Bridget meant so much to so many people here and around the world watching online now. Yeah, that was my Bridget. Thank you so much for loving me and for loving Bridget, who I will always love. <laughs> Goodbye. And I 
city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Right, for these words are faithful and they are true. Hallelujah. What a hope we have. Thank you, Father, for this special time just to be together. Many of us don't know each other because of distance and travel and time. And the folks that are looking in today by internet, we've not met them, any of us. But we are a family. <laughs> And we are together in this. We don't sorrow like people who have no hope. Our hope is fixed on the Lord Jesus. And we rejoice in his name today. Thank you for this celebration. Thank you for preaching. We trust you to care for Peter in the days ahead. Supply his every need and encourage him to put a song in his heart mm -hmm. and a determination to go forward confident that his God is going to provide for him. We know that's just like you to do that, <laughs> and we're trusting you to do that. So 
So together we give you praise today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's some refreshments back here. We don't want you to run off. It's a good time with fellowship. Just want to say thank you one more time. Thank you to Tom for leading us today. It's the wonderful Tom Grady. Isn't he good? Should we keep him? Yes. I want to thank everyone for being here. Greetings to every one of them. To families, or our families, wherever they are. Derek, thanks mate. Patrice, the whole family. John and Terry. Vanessa and Marcus all the way from Scotland. God bless you guys. Derek, thank you and Patrice for everything. Barry and Kay coming down from Tennessee. 